What's up guys, welcome to A Reseller's Life. My name is Chris, thank you so much for joining me. In this episode, I'm gonna talk about this ring. It's a Navajo feather turquoise sterling silver ring. Should I reorder this? Um, these are part of a wholesale deal that I'm trying with a US manufacturer in New Mexico. So New Mexico is where most of this stuff is made. It's usually handmade. However, if you start researching this category, some of the stuff is made in China. So no offense to myself, but Chinese people tend to sell this stuff super cheap. So do you want to compete selling pieces that are slightly unique like this? The one on eBay that I saw it selling like crazy looks a little bit different. Um, and of course, you could sell these for 50 to 100 bucks because they're slightly different than the mass produced ones. So would you guys you know, reorder? This sold for me in two days. So I don't know if you guys would reorder. It just depends on what it is, right? So there's also necklaces, bracelets, and you know they specialize in sterling silver. So let me know if you guys want to um, get a referral to them. You can email me at chris at dailyrefinement.com. I'll forward your email to that company. I don't need a referral fee. Uh, just smash the like button and consider subscribing because I give you guys one to three tips in every single video to help you get to your level. Um, today I also want to talk about something else, which is putting a box inside a padded flat rate envelope. So this is one way I can uh, protect my items. So this is a vice. So this is the item that's sold. It's a vice. I picked this up at the flea market a few days ago for I think three bucks. And these sell brand new for like $35. So they're, they're not, they're not um, that expensive. And it's just like a cheap vice it, it is pretty heavy and pretty nice though but i've had experience shipping vices before and they need to be shipped in a box so i basically packaged it in this ebay box and i put some extra cardboard around it hopefully it arrives safely it should uh this is going to go in a padded flat rate envelope so this ships for about seven bucks so again that's just something that i wanted to share with you guys let me know if you guys put a box inside the padded envelope this is how i would ship a mug too if you guys were shipping coffee mugs or Starbucks mugs, you know, for me, mugs aren't really worth it unless they sell for over 50 because there's an there's a chance that it could break. Of course, you can box it really, really well, but if somebody drop kicks it across the warehouse, it, it probably will still break. So you got to be careful. Um, but a box inside of a padded flat rate envelope, it's not indestructible, but, you know, it does prevent it usually from breaking. So let me know your experience with that. I'm gonna go into a few more things in this episode, so let's get so, into it. So real talk here. When you find items like this, this is Native American uh, jewelry, a sterling silver. It is um, stuff that you can order here in the United States to be made, especially in New Mexico, where most of this stuff comes from. It's tempting to just immediately reorder when you buy something that sells right away, but I encourage you guys to take a step back. I used to play chess um, competitively, and my instructor used to always say, the reason why most chess players don't win is because they, they make good moves. They don't pause when they find a good move and look for a great move. So here's the thing, there are plenty of items like that silver ring that I showed earlier that sold that I, already, that I just shipped earlier. And those are gonna be tempting. You'll see, it, you'll see it pop right away. You're competing against the Chinese equivalent. That's 15 or $20 shipped. And if you produce it in the United States, your cost might be $15 to $40 on a ring like that. You can customize it so that it's a little bit more special. But I think it's important to recognize you need to look for something great in order to survive in today's economy. Most of these items are being knocked off in Asia. I'll give you guys an example. Um, West Elm is a mid-tier furniture store here in the U.S. Um, it's like one, one step above Ikea. The stuff in there is between $300 I'd say five grand is this the furniture that's in there. If you go into the store and then you do a reverse image search, you'll see that all those items have been copied. They are on Amazon for a third to half the price by a Chinese seller who basically ripped off the design. This is where, this is the world that we live in right now. So instead of complaining, I have chosen to just embrace this. How can I take advantage of stuff like this? One, as a consumer, this is something I think is really important that a lot of resellers don't do. A lot of resellers don't really consume that much stuff. They're not shopping. They're not always looking for a deal for their own personal goods. In fact, if you look at a lot of resellers online, they're living sort of a bare minimum lifestyle and they're not doing a lot of shopping. I say take 10% of the time that you allot to reselling and just shop. Shop like a consumer. 
Look for deals. Look for deals in your own home. Look to equip yourself how you think a normal person would. Look for what's trending on home or on HQTV or H, I'm sorry, HGTV. Look at what people are buying. So as an example, the West Elm layout for an apartment like mine, which is 500 square feet, is probably about four to eight grand. For the furniture that's in there, if you were to look at what fits into it, I think my wife and I paid 600 to $800 for that furniture by reverse image searching items at West Elm and looking for similar items at uh, online on different sites like Wayfair, Amazon, Lowe's, Home Depot. We bought our glasses at Home Depot. So this is interesting. You look at all these different sites. This is how consumers think when they're looking at your items. And I think it's really important. Take a step back before you pull the trigger on a product and think about the competitors. Is somebody offering something that's very similar for half the price or a third the price? That's key. What's the sell-through rate? Are you looking on Keepa, on Amazon? Are you using tools to find out how often do these things sell and for how much money? And don't just place a good move. Take your time, wait for a great move. Most of the profit that I've made this year has just come from a few deals that I've made with brick and mortar shops. People are asking, how do I source brand new sneakers from where brand new sneakers come from? And brand new sneakers come from brick and mortar shoe stores or brick and mortar clothing shops. They have wholesale contracts with the manufacturer. It's very, very difficult to get an online account with Nike or Adidas. You have to be doing serious volume for them to open up their doors. And usually, even then, you're not allowed to only buy shoes. You've got to buy shoes, apparel, accessories. They're giving you that account. They're going to leave you with everything. You can't just sell the rarest sneakers. It doesn't work that way. Brick and mortar shops aren't going to allow you to do that. There's one exception. If you are selling hype beast sneakers or very rare, highly sought after stuff that sells for more than retail, usually you can work out a shady deal with the owner for paying more than retail for those items. I've seen that happen time and time again. There's a YouTube channel that I've seen, I think has been removed about this guy that paid off 15 store managers, triple the retail price for shoes that would sell for five times the retail price. These are kind of deals that go down on, on, on the store to store level when it comes to the high end stuff. Now that's very cash intensive. That's why I recommend you take your time, be very conservative, wait for a great move, wait for something that's a little bit more unique and jump in. If I was gonna do the jewelry game, right? I wouldn't go for that silver ring that I showed earlier in the video because it's too competitive. I would try to do something a little bit more unique, a little bit more expensive, a little bit more difficult to copy, right? I would look at some of these necklaces that are more ornate, things that people might not wanna knock off in China because the cost is too much for the mold, right? I would look for something that I can make here in the States that can actually compete with something overseas. So I think too many people's stores is full of good stuff. There's millions and millions of good products on eBay. Let's take our time and wait for a great product and go heavier on that investment. And again, there's no guarantee that that's gonna work out. I'm just saying, from my experience doing this for three years, I think it's better to just wait for a few good deals than spread yourself too thin in the too many random items. So this is what I think of when it comes to thrifting. Okay, thrifting is a great place to get good ideas, not a great place to buy inventory. I consider it the carbs of the resale world. You just consume it mindlessly unless you have an intentional plan. That's what carbs are. You can eat a whole bag of potato chips. That's 4,000 calories, which is terrible for you. You didn't even notice. You can go to the thrift store, spend 40, 60, $70, not even feel it and just say, you know what? It's profitable. Not worried about it. This is the stuff that makes you fat. It makes your store fat. It's full of stuff that's not really listed and it's just average and it's making your store have the equivalent of reseller diabetes. Okay, so let's not do that. Let's keep it tight, lean, let's keep it healthy. Go in your store and constantly trim items that suck out of it. Chop the bottom 10% out of your store ruthlessly. This stuff is bad, donate it, lower it, auction it, do whatever it is that you need to do to get it out of there and just slowly put in better stuff into your store. And then eventually you'll have a store that's all great items. So I'm not kidding that all, as I'm going through this, I wanna keep trading in my products to one day where I just sell one jet a year for a million dollars profit. I like that idea. Less but better. Less but better is one of the mottos of my life and my resale company. So I used to be 10K on the Bay, for those of you guys that have been following me for a while, and I sought 
10,000 items on eBay. I still have the same goal, but I don't want that many SKUs. I want my SKUs to actually shrink. So I'm pretty proud of myself for having almost a quantity of two average on all the items in my store. And I'm just slowly improving that. You move away from one-offs when you can. You start to get replenishables or items that you have multiple of or items that you can order, right? And of course, it takes time. This is not something that happens overnight. It's a marathon. That's why I want everyone to be a little bit more conservative. One more final tip before we go. Smash the like button. Consider subscribing because I give you guys tips in every single video to, to help you grow your online store. Um, help the channel out and buy my reseller field guide. It's 35 bucks with code YouTube in the description below. That really helps me keep making content. And you can also get the physical guide for 30 bucks extra if you want that too. It's like a journal to keep track of your progress. This is the final tip that I wanna leave with you guys, which is you have to have some cash reserves. Okay, so reselling is really scary. It's very easy to get suspended. It's very easy to have a buy-in on a product that doesn't work. You might be banned from selling a certain category. You don't know what's gonna happen. So it's really important to have some cash reserves. Be weary, okay, when you're watching people. The, true, the resellers that I have seen that have been really, really, really successful are generally very conservative. Okay, they're not flexing Lamborghinis. They're not spending on million dollar homes. They're not. They're very like practical people because it's hard. You never know when you're gonna have a key employee leave or some inventory go bad. So just be patient, be conservative. It can take a while. You're competing against people who've been in this business for 30, 40 years, have all these crazy connections, and you're just this little guy popping in you can do it. It's just going to take longer than you think, and it's going to require more money than you think. So hang in there, guys. Smash the like button. Consider subscribing. Hit that notification bell, and I'll see you guys next time. Take care.